Meghan Markle was joined by Trevor Noah, a comedian and host of The Daily Show, on the latest and final episode of her podcast. The pair discussed the perpetuation of archetypes in the media and explored how men can play a role in deconstructing the labels and stereotypes often pinned on women. Now, resurfaced footage has shown the comedian criticizing the royal family, namely King Charles III, leading one royal expert to question the Duchess of Sussex's choice of guests. Richard Eden, the Daily Mail diary editor, recalled a segment of Trevor's talk show during which he called into question the king's ability as monarch. It came after a video clip showed Charles getting frustrated with a leaking pen in the aftermath of the Queen's death in September. The host detailed the monarch's gaffe-laden first week as Britain's king. It's going to take a lot of work to shape the monarchy into something that everyone can get behind, he said. But based on his first week in power, looks like King Charles isn't the guy to do it. Referencing the comment on Tuesday, Mr. Eden tweeted, First, Trevor Noah insults hashtag Prince Harry's father, it's going to take a lot of work to shape the monarchy into something that everyone can get behind. Based on his first week in power, looks like King Charles isn't the guy to do it. Next, hashtag Meghan invites Noah onto her podcast. The footage of Charles' battle with the pen was heavily mocked online. In the clip, the king became irritated by a leaking fountain pen after writing the wrong date in a visitor's book. Oh God, I hate this, he complained. I can't bear this bloody thing. Read more, Queen Cancer Revelation approved by royals to avoid Harry Book Bombshell Meghan invited Trevor Noah R. onto the final episode of her podcast, Image, Getty Images, The Duchess of Sussex released the final episode of Archetypes on Tuesday, Image, Spotify, Prince William is holding huge grudge against Harry and Meghan Prince William and Prince Harry were united in grief as they mourned the loss of their grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II. However, Christopher Anderson, author of the upcoming book The King, The Life of Charles III, has claimed the Prince of Wales is still holding a grudge against his younger brother and his wife. What is it about? Find out here. Speaking on his show, the South African comedian said, I love how Charles says the pens leak on him all the time. You're literally the King of England, dude. If you don't like the pens, get different pens. I'm not an expert in the monarchy, but I'm pretty sure the hierarchy doesn't go, Prince William, King Charles and then the guy who buys the pens. He continued, I feel kinda bad for him. I do. Because in the old days, the king would have never had these issues. There would be no leaking pens. Also, the king would never get corrected after writing the wrong date. That just would have been the new date. Maybe King Charles is just stressed out right now. Maybe that's why this is happening, the host speculated. But if you paid attention to Charles back during his Prince days, you would know that this is pretty much how he's always been. The comedian then brought up footage in which a former royal butler recalled being summoned by the then Prince Charles to pick up a letter that had fallen into the bin next to him. When I was a kid, I thought kings had to pull swords out of stones, Noah joked. This dude can barely pull his D asterisk CK out of his own pants? Trevor criticized the king during a segment of his late night talk show, Image, The Daily Show, trending it is not the only time the comedian has criticized the British royal family. Following the monarch's death, Trevor argued people oppressed by the British crown are being recolonized by pressure to mourn the loss of Queen Elizabeth. He said, you can't expect people to show respect for something that never respected them. Further footage of the comedian making a joke in which he refers to the late queen as a asterisk TCH has provoked some royal fans to take to social media to slam the Duchess for inviting him on her podcast. One Twitter user said, simple question everyone. What the heck does Trevor Noah know about how hard King Charles has worked as a prince and now as a king? Answer. 
Absolutely nothing. The fact Markle invited him on her podcast was very much strategic emo. The final episode was as dull. Another added, M has hit rock bottom, while a third said, Megan hosts Trevor Noah, who mocked the king in a segment on his show just a few days after the queen died. Of course, no media will comment at just how vindictive a collaboration like that is. But just imagine the outrage if roles were reversed. I have no words. Don't miss, Gen Z empathize with Prince Harry as he deals with childhood pain Prince Harry's book Bound to Distress Royal Family Prince William has barely spoken to Harry after memoir announcement however, some social media users came to the Duchess defense, with one praising her decision to invite Trevor on the podcast. OMG, powerful ending of the podcast, nobody see this coming, they tweeted. Awesome job Duchess and her team. Another user added, thank you for posting this. It was an incredible episode, and Trevor Noah was brilliant. A third referenced a quote the comedian cited during the hour-long episode. Black man and black woman walk from neighborhood to neighborhood and stones are thrown at them. They finally get home, and stones are thrown at her. Trevor Noah, the user posted alongside a photograph of the talk show host. During the episode, Trevor told Megan, I was born in South Africa to a Kosa South African mother, a black woman. My father is Swiss, he lived in South Africa most of his adult life, I would say. And I grew up in a world that was, well, completely defined by race. Your race determined where you could go, what you could be. Megan released her 12th and final episode of Archetypes on Tuesday, Image, Spotify. He continued, I grew up in a world where that was the status quo. And so black people were at the bottom of the totem. And I think something that holds true all over the world is black women were the most oppressed. He goes on to cite the quote as something the black women he grew up with would say, adding, and that always stuck with me because it just spoke to the story of what it's like to be a black woman in society. And I experienced it secondhand, witnessing my mother's journey, my grandmother's journey, my aunt's journey, because I grew up in a very matriarchal society, which was quite common in South Africa. Meghan and Trevor's poignant conversation comes just days before the Sussexes are expected to accept the Ripple of Hope award for their royal exit and subsequent claims of racism made against the firm. The Robert F. Kennedy Ripple of Hope award celebrates inspiring leaders who are moving the world forward, according to its website. Carrie Kennedy, RFK's daughter who was involved in the selection process, said the Duke and Duchess of Sussex had been heroic in standing up against the royal institution, suggesting that they couldn't have structural racism. Whether or not Meghan and Prince Harry will attend the ceremony to accept the award is unknown, particularly as the news has caused huge controversy among royal watchers and commentators. Meghan and Harry may accept the award next week, Image, Getty. Speaking to Express. Co.uk, Royal expert Richard Fitzwilliams said honoring Meghan and Harry with the award is extraordinary. He noted how the honor relies on accounts told to Oprah Winfrey during their bombshell interview last year, fearing it is their version of the truth. The commentator claimed it will, very clearly, impact perceptions of the royal family in the US and be, very clearly outrageous, if accepted. He said, this award is an extraordinary thing. So much in the Oprah interview I believe was their truth or their version of it. And I worry this award will legitimize it in the minds of young people. The issue is threefold, we don't know what their Netflix series will be, we don't know what their book will be, and we have yet to see what they will do with this award. He added, we don't know the details, we haven't seen the book officially, no one knows what's in the Netflix documentary, but really clearly this award is for this so-called challenge to an institution that goes back over thousands of years. 
The problem is Oprah didn't probe at all, so people will see that they won an award, and they will primarily identify this with the Oprah interview and certain comments on podcasts and programs. But it will primarily be identified in people's minds with Oprah and what should have been probed wasn't, a large number of questions, and it will add credence to their brand in an area where I believe that they've been destructive.